Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I guess this is going to be part two of light versus darkness. So let me give you some... Uh, things to consider. All right, let's take a look at the uh, second chapter of 2 Thessalonians. You got 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians. Paul, his writings. And there's a big push nowadays to discredit Paul and his writings. Why? Because he warns and reveals about the man of sin that will be revealed. So let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So this is talking about the second coming. And... There are church groups out there that are going to try to con you into thinking, oh, yeah, the second coming and the pre-trib rapture, that's, that's two different events. That's, that's what they teach. Uh, but I don't think so. I can't find a separation of that anywhere in the Bible. And I've read it a couple of times, once or twice. Verse 2 that ye be not soon shaken in mind. Don't let your faith be shaken, people. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So if somebody's saying something or... Uh, some kind of an evil spirit or a letter that pretends to be from them. Don't be shaken. Don't be troubled. Mm -mm, don't, don't pay attention to all that. The day of Christ is at hand. Now, there's people who will tell you that the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is two different events. But you got to realize something. When they do that, what they're doing is denying that Jesus Christ is Lord. If the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is two different events, they're denying that Christ is Lord. Verse 3, listen to this. I mean, this is right out of what Jesus warned in Matthew 24. And we're going to probably look at a little bit of that. Let no man, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day, the day of Christ, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Remember that, a falling away first. That's what we're talking about right here, falling away. And that man of sin be revealed, the man of sin be revealed. I don't care. John calls him the beast. Uh, He's called the Antichrist, the man of sin, but he's also called the son of perdition. There's only two sons of perdition in the Bible. The one that is to come, and then Judas Iscariot was called the son of perdition. Now, I did a Bible study on that, if you're interested. What does perdition mean? It means to fall. The son of perdition, the son of falling. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. A falling away from what? A falling away from the faith. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, there's groups of people that'll tell you that this has all happened in the past. 
I don't think so. I'll tell you, some Roman general did this. Uh, you really think a Roman general could tell the emperor of Rome, a mere general, tell the emperor of Rome, I'm God, showing himself that he's God? You think the emperor is going to go down and worship this general? But yet that's what people teach. Oh yeah, it happened in the past. Deceivers. Are we in the falling away? I say yes. I was on Face Fascist Book the other day. I'm in jail with them for another three weeks or so. Why? Uh, because I pointed out who uh, Time Magazine's Man of the Year was, 1938. Hitler. Time Magazine's Man of the Year. Oh, yeah. I wasn't promoting him. I wasn't saying, oh, yeah, I love Hitler. No, no. I was just, I just posted the, 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 the magazine's cover with the picture of Adolf on there. But guess what? Time Magazine's Man of the Year, 1939, Joseph Stalin. In the American media, they called him Uncle Joe. Yeah, the guy that murdered millions, millions of Christians and starved millions of people. If you were a landowner, business owner, if you were college educated, uh, you were you were got uh, military police. You were gotten rid of. They got rid of you. They don't want anybody with half a brain or knows how to handle a firearm. Matter of fact, uh, they even have a saying in communism after the revolution ha is finished. It says that the revolution always eats its own. So if you were in on the revolution and you knew what was going on and who was pulling the strings and who was behind what, you didn't have long to live because, well, there was a saying with the pirates, dead men tell no tales. If you know too much, you disappeared. You were killed. They got rid of you. But who's behind all this? Well, Satan, prince of the power of the air. Communist Russia, they, um, if they had an old church that they didn't want to keep around, let's say it was an old wooden building with that they saw no worthwhile purpose for the future, they just uh, burned it down with the people inside of it. You don't hear about that in the media, do you? But the... Uh, But you know what is on the media every week about the uh, you-know-whos. But that's, uh, that's another story. I can't even mention the, uh, the number because uh, you easily get a strike. Um, I had two strikes on YouTube and... That's why one of the reasons why I was laying low there for a while because uh, if I got one more, they'd delete the channel. So I thought, yeah, I'll wait until one of the strikes disappears. It did the other day. So, yeah. So these so called church leaders, so called, they want you to think that everything in the Bible is all past or it's all future. And I was on fascist book and I, you know, matter of fact, I got a uh, three week strike on them, but there was a girl. She posted favorably about the, uh, the latter day, Ain'ts. They call themselves the Latter Day Saints, but I call them the Latter Day Ain'ts because they ain't. Um, they're 
more commonly known as the Mormons. Well, check this out. They had an angel named Moron I. Seriously, that's all they spell it. M-O-R-O-N with an I on the end. Moron I. They call him Moroni, but I call it Moron I. Because if you believe that dribble, well, pfft, you, <laughs> what can I tell you? But they teach that in the Doctrines and Covenants, they teach that Jesus was the brother of Satan. Yeah, which basically means that they have Satan's brother as their Messiah or Christ. And I pointed this out to her, and she politely told me that, well, you know, I know that they're the, they're the church. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, you know, so Christianity was lost for about 1,800 years until Joseph Smith came along and this moron eye angel came to him and told him to start a new denomination with uh, Satan's brother as their savior. I see why God leaves people in their delusion. Oh, look at the Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, they uh, they taught the world was going to end by 75, 76. And I know this because I was studying a little bit with them and I had a buddy from high school that was a member of their organization. I won't even, I don't even like, to, I can't even call it a church. It's an organization. And he kept telling me, oh, Bob, it's going to all end in 75, 76. It's all going to end. Christ is coming back and it's going to, you know, take care of everything. Uh, well, guess what? They were wrong. You know, if you set a date, and that's why I don't, uh, you'll never hear me setting a date. You, uh-uh. But they set a date. Date was wrong. And if you claim, if you set a date, that makes you a false prophet. But guess what? They lost a significant number of members when this didn't happen. But then they say, well, you know, well, yeah, we thought it was going to happen, but we didn't really, uh, you know, we weren't really setting it as, as a prophet. You know, we were just, you know, we're getting new light all the time. Well, yeah, they're getting new light from the angel, an angel of light, which is uh, Satan, the prince of the power of the air, God of this world. Well, guess what? My buddy from high school, do you think he would, he left the church, their, their organization? No, he sure didn't. He stayed with them till the bitter end. And uh, he died a few years ago. Matter of fact, I think uh, his family thinks his wife killed him. But, um, hey, he's with, uh, he's with the rest of the organizational people from times past now. Well, guess what? The Seventh-day Adventists, uh, they have the same roots as the Jehovah's Witnesses do. Same type of roots, you know. Are we in the great falling away? I think so. I mean, look at the Hebrew roots, people. They don't even, they won't even use the name Jesus. I mean, it, they'll tell you that the King James, well, no, I'm sorry, no. They'll tell you that the New Testament was originally written in Hebrew, of which there's no, there's no existing copies of it anywhere. There's no Hebrew uh, manuscripts in the, of the New Testament anywhere that I'm aware of. Zero. There's 5,000 Greek ones, plus... But they'll say, oh, well, yeah, the New Testament was originally in Hebrew. But then those terrible Greeks, they mistranslated the, the New Testament and made it anti-Semitic. 
And, uh, yeah. And really, his name isn't Jesus, even though the Bible, my King James Bible says that Gabriel told Mary to call him Jesus. Joseph, in a dream, was called, told to call him Jesus. But they want you to think that, well, you know, for 1,900 plus years, we've had it all wrong. We've had it all wrong. His name is really Yeshua HaMashiach. And, and, and the church has been wrong for 1,900 years. Just like the Jehovah's Witnesses, just like the Book of Mormons, uh, and everybody else. We've been wrong for 1,800 years plus. And thank God we had somebody to come and tell us the real name of the Messiah. And that's what they want us to believe. Are there some bad things been mixed up in the church? Oh, absolutely. I don't like Christmas, so-called. And I don't like uh, Easter either. Matter of fact, Easter is the uh, spring goddess of fertility. That's why you got bunny rabbits and Easter eggs. She has many different names. Uh, did you know one of her names was Columbia? Uh, I wonder why Washington, D.C. is called the District of Columbia. The goddess. I mean, they tell you, you know, this stuff is so in your face. Is there a falling away first? Absolutely. You know, and they'll and all these other different denominations will always point out the problems with everybody else's denomination, but they'll never look in a mirror for their problems. I mean, nowadays, uh, you got people that'll uh, they actually tell you when the Bible talks about repentance. They'll say, oh, well, that just means to change your mind about, you know, going from unbelief to belief. You know, from not believing in God to believing in God. Oh, wait a minute. James chapter 2 says, uh, Believest thou in one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. What's the difference between us believing in God and the devils believing in God? Not much. But if we have repentance, does it just mean changing your mind from unbelief to belief? Hopefully you'll change your mind and turn from sin. The devils aren't going to do that, are they? No. But if you read the second chapter of Revelation, Jesus tells his believing church to repent. Repent of what? Their unbelief? What? Is Jesus telling his church to, to repent of their unbelief and to believe in him? I thought they already, the church means they already believe. He tells them to repent of their deeds. That's what he tells them to repent of. You know, it's, there is so much, they talk about the falling away. People don't even know what Bible to use. I mean, this is how bad it is. Yeah, Revelation 2, verse 5. Speaking, Jesus speaking to the church. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Does that just mean to just believe from unbelief to belief? Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Works! Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Verse 16. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. 
Verse 21, and I gave her space to repent of her unbelief. No. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. And she repented not. Verse 22, behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their unbelief. No, except they repent of their deeds. Yeah. I mean, you know, there it is, you know. I saw a really interesting post on fascist book. It said, if, if, if you believe God is nothing but love and you don't believe in judgment or judging, you don't have the God of the Bible. You got Oprah. Yeah, Oprah Winfrey. Do you know she has six toes? Just like uh, Halle Berry and uh, Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, six toes, just like the uh, giants of old. They had six toes and six fingers. I saw a, um, I don't remember what it was on. May, might have been the History Channel. I'm not sure. About a foot doctor that was, um, people would bring their children in that had six toes and they'd have one of the toes surgically removed when they were little children or little babies or whatever. Because they don't want you to know that they had six toes. Yeah. Somebody told me that when the Indians would, uh, the American Native Indians would hold up their hands and go, how? That was so that you could see they had five fingers. I don't know how true that is, but hey. How? So that you could see they were not the six finger. Do you know there is families in India, not American Indians, but India Indians, India, and there were Indian tribes out in the west of the United States, six fingers. Oh, yeah. Are they descended from the giants of old? Probably. Falling away, people. Falling away. Do you know that the in the NI uh, the NIV Bible we don't even know what Bible Bible is nowadays. The largest selling Bible at least one year, maybe two, was the NIV. And do you know the NIV? Oh well, if you if you go on social media, you will hear that Jesus is the devil. Really? They teach this? And you know what? They always use an NIV. What? What are you talking about, Chaplain Bob? Well, it's real simple. In the King James Bible in Isaiah 14, it talks about Lucifer falling from heaven. But the NIV doesn't say Lucifer. It says the morning star. Delete Lucifer, insert morning star. Well, who is the morning star? In Revelation 22, Jesus says he's the morning star. Unless, of course, so basically, Jesus, the morning star, fell from heaven in Isaiah 14. Unless, of course, you're talking about the complete Jewish Bible, Messianic Jew, David Stern, he doesn't even use the word Jesus. He says Yeshua. So Yeshua, the morning star of Revelation 22, the morning star falls from heaven in Isaiah 14. Yeah. So, and they laugh about this. But did you know that Harry Potter, at least one year, one of the Harry Potter books, you know, a book on how to be a wizard, and witches outsold the Bible, outsold the Bible, a book on magic and witchcraft, outsold the Bible. 
they made several movies of Harry Potter. Uh, at least two that I know of, maybe more. I'm not a fan, trust me. But uh, the falling away. You know, in 1964, they took prayer out of public school, where it had been for probably 200 years. Since the pilgrims landed on the shores of America, well, what would become America, prayer in Jesus' name. Oh, that if that's offensive to the, well, you know who's. It rhymes with news, and it starts with a J. Yeah. Yeah. And we had Bible reading. Believe it or not, we had Bible reading. I remember on the the PA system, they, they had prayer and Bible reading and Pledge of Allegiance. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know what? I wouldn't pledge allegiance now. Uh-uh. I don't pledge my allegiance to a country that uh, legal abortion and uh, Church of Satan chaplains in the army and the military and in the jails. Uh, sheesh. We are so far, I cannot believe how far we have fallen in this country of my lifetime. I just, the, the easy, when I was in the army in the early, to mid, well, mid 70s, let's say, the easiest way to get out of the army was to tell them you were, you were a sodomite. You'd be out before you could say, man, that was a fast discharge. They'd get rid of you. Now it's don't ask, don't tell. To, oh, I'm celebrating. Absolutely falling away. But there's other... Uh, other things falling away too. Look at TBN. They call it Trinity Broadcasting. I, uh, I don't know. The Blasphemy Network, the Beelzebub Network, the Babylon Network. I don't know. What does that B stand for? You know, a lot of people on there well you got Sid Roth it's supernatural yeah it's supernatural all right but uh you got a group called the charismatics and basically in a nutshell they teach God is your genie you know, all you got to do is believe and confess with your mouth. God's going to give me a thousand dollars. But to get that thousand dollars, you, you got to send them a hundred. And God will bless you ten times. Ten times that God will bless you. And here's our address. So here, send that donation in. God's going to bless you. You know, God's your genie. Rub that magic lamp. And God's going to give you three wishes. Think about it. You know, when God asked King Solomon, he says, what would you have me give you? You know, Solomon could have asked for wealth. He could have asked for a hot looking wife that's great in the, well, never mind. You know, uh, how about the, uh, the lives of my enemies? You know, killing all my enemies. Or make me famous or whatever. But he didn't ask for all that. He asked for wisdom and knowledge. He says, Lord, you've made me king over this nation. Maybe we should read that. 
Well, let's go to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3, verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord. Hmm. Is that one of the two commandments that Jesus gave? It said, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On these two things hang all the law and the prophets. Oh, yeah. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and burned incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, And God said, Ask, what shall I give thee? So what is it you want, Solomon? And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he has walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. I guess he's saying, I don't know where I, where I am, where to go. I don't know what to do, Lord. Verse 8. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. Lord, give me strength and wisdom so that I can rule these people to your glory. I guess that's the Bob translation. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord. That Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. To be able to rule this people the way that the Lord wanted it, them to be ruled. Verse 12. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked. So not only am I going to give you what you did ask, I'm going to give you the things that you could have asked for, but you didn't. Both riches and honor. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if, oh boy, there's that big if, and if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. You know, people, there's a verse in the Bible. It talks about that a, I, know, I think it's a son, but it could be a child, that honors his mother and his father that they would be given length of days to live. 
I guess the opposite side of that coin is if you dishonor your mother and father, you're going to have a short life. So what did God give Solomon? Wisdom, riches, and honor. He didn't have to listen to TBN and send him a, a check for $1,000 to get $10,000. No, uh-uh. God wasn't his genie. Rub that magic lamp and I'm going to give you three wishes. Oh, yeah. Nope, that's not how it works. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 16. I've done a, an entire Bible study on this, but... Let's look at it from a different angle. Verse 19. And there was a certain rich man. This is not a parable, people. Jesus isn't saying, let me tell you about the parable of... No, no. He says there was. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple. Purple's royalty, people. This guy's probably of the tribe of Judah. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. He was dressed very well and fared sumptuously every day. He ate well. You know, rich people eat filet mignon. They don't eat hamburger. Verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs, the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Did uh, this rich guy give Lazarus anything by his own hand? No. The only thing Lazarus got was the things that fell from the table at, on the ground that the rich man wouldn't touch because it was dirty. What did Lazarus have? Nothing. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Lazarus didn't even have good health. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. Did the rich man uh, give him anything? No. Did he offer him help with his medical care? I mean, if he's late at this guy's gate, Lazarus must, I mean, you know, Lazarus must be seen every time this rich man goes in and out. Did he offer him anything? No, nothing. The dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. And was carried by the angels. Do you know when you die, you're carried by the angels? Now, you got to realize something. This is before Christ. This is before Christ. I can prove to you in the book of Revelation. I think it's in Revelation 12, if memory serves me correctly. When we die, we go to the altar of the Lord. We're under the altar of the Lord in heaven. Or at least the people that die during the tribulation are. Maybe I'll cover that in a little bit. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Remember something. Abraham was called the friend of God. God made a covenant with Abraham. He made a basically a contract with him. Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your descendants like the stars in the sky and in the sand of the sea. And those of you that live in the city, you have no idea how many stars there are in the sky. You want to see how many stars there are in the sky? Go out in the desert sometime where there's no street lights within 50 miles or 20 miles and look up. That's why they call it the Milky Way. There are so many stars. It looks like milk. 
they estimate there's millions of them. God must have been really busy. That's a joke, people, you know. So the beggar died, was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, the friend of God. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell. He lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. People, this is before Christ. There was hell, and then there was a special compartment in hell. Part of it, I guess you could say, you had the non-smoking and the smoking section. Yeah, that's a joke. I know. Don't quit my day job. Oh, wait, I'm retired. Never mind. Thank God I'm not Sarah Silverman. If you don't know what I'm talking about, good for you. So the rich man, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, did you know that Abraham was his father? He was a child of Abraham, this rich guy. He said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame and everybody will say oh this is a parable no jesus said and there was lazarus and abraham they're not in the flames but the rich man is but abraham said son abraham's acknowledging that he was one of his children son Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. Oh yeah, you had a nice house to live in. You had good food. You had money. You had beautiful clothes, linen, purple, rulership. You had it all in this life. Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now, he, Lazarus, is comforted, and thou art tormented. What's the difference between these two? Well, evidently, Lazarus wanted the things of God, and the rich man wanted the things of this world. And somebody sent me a thing that was along those lines, and I read it, and I said, yep, that makes so much sense. When you want the things of this world, have you ever noticed the most evil people, how they always seem to have everything? They have money, they have a house, they have a nice car, they got everything that they want. And the people that want the Lord, they don't have those things. There's a verse in the Bible I couldn't, I, I won't, I won't even try to look it up. But I think it was King David in the Psalms. He said, Lord, don't make me so rich. Now I'm paraphrasing. He said, don't make me so rich that I forget you. But don't make me so poor that I'm hungry, you know, basically, don't make me so poor that I curse you. Jesus only offered us, promised us two things in this life, food and raiment, which is clothing. That's the only two things in this life we are promised. When Janice Joplin said, Lord, won't you give me a Mercedes Benz? Janice Joplin was not talking about the Lord of the God of the Bible. No, she's talking about the other one. Yeah. And if you remember that song, you're old. Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus, 
evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. When you want the things of God more than anything in the world, God, you, God will find you and you will find God. But if you want the things of this world, the Lord's gracious. He'll give you the things of this world. But when you get to the other side, just remember, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from thence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. There's a big valley between them. They can't go either way. Then he, the rich man, said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest sendest him to my father's house. See, the rich man actually had some compassion on his, his brothers here. Verse 28, For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear him. them. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he, Abraham, said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Well, guess what, people? Who rose from the dead? on the third day and was seen by many. Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. And you know what? There's even people now that will say, well, you know, Jesus, when he was crucified, he, he really didn't die. And then, you know, he was three days in the grave and, you know, he sort of got his strength back. And, uh, you know, and saw everybody and, uh, you know, and they, were, they were like this little story about, you know, well, he rose from the dead. He was beaten to a pulp, had a spear stuck in his side when he was crucified. And you're going to tell me a Roman soldier sticking a spear in your side doesn't know the difference between somebody alive and dead? The Bible even says that the, the blood and the water separated. That only happens to dead people. If you're still alive and your heart's pumping, the blood and the water mix together. But when your heart quits pumping and you're dead, the blood and the water separate. And when they stick a spear in your side and water comes out and blood comes out separately, you know their heart quit and it's had time to separate. This is the kind of lies that you get coming out of these churches, and they call that the swoon theory. And then you got the Jays that'll tell you, well, you know, they, the the disciples, they, uh, they, 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 they stole his body, and then they hid it away, and then said, oh, Jesus rose from the dead. Really? Do you know that eleven of the disciples? Well, no, I'm sorry. Ten of the twelve disciples, the apostles, do you know that they were killed for their faith? Uh, if you stole somebody's body to make some fake story up about Jesus rising from the dead, and you know for a fact that you stole his body and hid him away so that you could make a, a resurrection story to make yourself seem great, would you die for a lie? Would you die for that? I mean, if the whoever, you know, the you-know-whos and the Romans came and says, well, we're going to kill you for your, your faith and your resurrected Messiah, and you say, oh, wait a minute here. I'll show you where the body is. Don't kill me, and I'll deny Christ. I mean, come on, really? Wouldn't that be, you know, 10 of the 12 apostles died for their faith. 
Judas hung himself. But John, uh, the apostle, not John the Baptist, John the apostle, he wrote the book of Revelation. He's the only one that didn't die for his faith. He's the only one. Peter, Andrew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, they all died for their faith, according to history and legend. I mean, look at the modern church today. You think any of these people are willing to die for their faith? No. No, God's their genie. Send money. You know, even when they give you false prophecies, they still flock to these people. It's unbelievable. They won't even bother reading the Bible. They don't even know what the Bible is. They don't even know what a Bible is, and they won't read it. I mean, can you imagine that? Jesus warned in Matthew 24, be not deceived. Over and over and over, he warned. How do we not be deceived? You read. You read the warnings that Jesus gave us. But they won't do it. They won't do it. And can you imagine... The Lord's getting ready to throw him into the, the lake of fire. I said, but Jesus, I went to church. I threw money in the collection plate. The scariest words you'd ever hear is, I never knew you. Depart from me. Jesus warned about the mark of the beast, not to take it, not to worship the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast. But yet millions are going to. Churchgoers. People that say that they believe in Jesus. You watch. The pre-trib rapture. The false prophecy. That's going to happen. People don't even realize that within a hundred years ago, millions of Christians died for their faith in Eastern Europe. Millions. Millions of them. But you don't hear about it. Nothing. There's nothing. Very few people know that. Fox's Book of Martyrs. Has there, how, many people, how many people have read that book? That was one of the first books I read when, I, uh, when the Lord grabbed me by the throat and shook me up. Well, figuratively. He had to almost kill me to get my attention. You know how bad he had to do that with me? I was driving home one night around, oh, I don't know, 1, 1.30, somewhere around there. I'm on a motorcycle on Interstate 95. Going home, probably doing around 60, I don't know, 55, 60 miles an hour, whatever it was. And I got rear-ended from a car. Yeah. How many people do you know that survive getting rear-ended by a car on a motorcycle on an interstate and can walk? Lord had to really do some serious stuff to get my attention. Well, he guess what? He got my attention. People, it is, I just, it, it boggles my mind. I mean, I don't claim to be a prophet. I, you know, I don't claim to be any kind of great Bible scholar. It's just, it's just unbelievable. Jesus warned us over and over and over not to be deceived. In Matthew 24 and verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I mean, you know, in a nutshell, 
You know, they asked him, hey, uh, Jesus, what, what's going to be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? Don't let anybody deceive you. You know, it's a shame. People have died. People have died to give us the Bible. They were burned at the stake for daring to translate the Bible into their own language, English, German, and people won't even bother to read it. Unbelievable. Well, that's probably why there's 666 different versions of it. And people say, well, y'all don't understand it. Well, get on your hands and knees and ask the Lord to reveal it to you. You will understand it. It'll make sense. But you're not going to understand it going to a church, so-called, because it's not a church. You don't go to church because we are the church. Where two or three are gathered in his name. But beware, people. You know, when God, God only, like I said, God promises you two things, food and raiment, clothing, food and clothes. That's the only two things he offers, promises his children. He doesn't want us to get too attached to this world. Because there's going to come a day when we're going to have to leave everything. I mean, it's almost at that point now. New York and California is at the point. If you don't get the um, medical thing that they're pushing, why, well, you can't go to the grocery store. It's, it's coming, people. It's coming. Get yourself... Get your spiritual house in order. I honestly think that God will provide water and manna. Just like in the Old Testament when God took Israel out of Egypt. And that'll probably be the next study. I mean, I've done it before, but we'll, you know, look at it again. So, be not deceive take heed that no man deceive you or an angel especially one named moron i right i mean really well you know the 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 true faith was lost for 1800 years but here we got a new guy that's going to tell you the uh the real thing yeah i i don't think so so all right, well, light versus darkness. People beware. When you get all the things you want in this world, look out. Trust me. Every time I tried to prepare for a, a career, the door was slammed in my face. I couldn't understand it. My father, earthly father, said, Bob, you have the worst luck of anybody that I know. And I couldn't understand it. I could not understand it. How come I couldn't have a career? Nope, wouldn't never happen. I think the Lord was preparing me. I don't know, maybe. So, well, all glory, praise, honor in Jesus' name. Amen.